Hello, my Sock Universe, to another review of Nations League games. We're starting match day two already. It's getting rolling, getting rolling. And I'm wearing, of course, everyone's new favorite, darling, Finland. Uh, fitting to the weather outside because we have rain. It's get, well, it should get warm today as well, but you know. Finland it is. I actually, and I say this before we get to any games, I really love those new Finland home jerseys. And I don't know, it's very often that I like white jerseys with some crazy pattern on there. Uh, there's something about it. Then I, you know, then I buy them and I say, oh, again, I have so many white jerseys. <laughs> but it's a bit, this is a blue Finland jersey. I need the home jersey. This one is one that I really want to have. But we're not starting in Finland. We're actually starting with the big result in Madrid at the Estadio. Uh, Alfredo Di Stefano, which was for the first, it was nice to see it finally without the fake crowd. Uh, where Spain completely took apart Ukraine. Uh, and it's not the first time because I was at the 2006 World Cup when they did the same result, 4 0. But at the 2006 World Cup, it was kind of the beginning of something really new and great for Spain. Um, this time around, I'm not so sure yet. It might be, but there's still a lot of the old card in there. Speaking of old guy, I mean, the game started very quickly. A uh, penalty was given for uh, Spain. Sergio Ramos steps up in third. Third minute is done. Uh, one nil. It was always an uphill battle for Ukraine from that moment on. I was actually not sure about that game from the beginning because I know that Ukraine is a pretty good team, but... Um, they're not necessarily exciting to watch, although they can uh, score exciting goals. Uh, the game kind of then, uh, you know, it was always Spain on the f more on with the initiative, but Ukraine kept it kind of uh, level, but never got into the game. And I was thinking at the point and it got confirmed, I think Ukraine has reached a little bit this Poland level where you are consistently um, there qualifying and can play with the bigger boys. However, uh, this next step to go up against the Spains, the Germanys and so on, that is not that um, easy anymore. The game really took then, it was, well, what I liked is that Spain actually played with a new lineup with Dani Olmo in there and especially Ansu Fati. And it was mostly Ansu Fati show who was a thorn in the side of uh, the Ukraine uh, defense. And it was from Dani Olmo, uh, I think it was a, it was a cross in that uh, Sergio Ramos, he just got a touch on it towards goal and in typical Sergio Ramos fashion. It falls into net and it's 2 nil. and at that point I always I actually thought, yeah, might be a little bit um, not lucky, but it was surprising that it fell in at the, the, the 2-0. I think Spain had the 2 nil coming, but not uh, that it was really imminent, but then it really um, fell apart for the Ukraine with Ansu Fati after a nice assist by Region, really taking a shot that fit exactly into the... Um, uh, goal, make it 3 0, and that was the game. And I have to say, Ansu Fati became the youngest goal scorer for Spain. And I also, he was magnificent. This was absolutely Ansu Fati show, despite Ramos uh, grabbing the headlines. And you could see, it. yeah, maybe there is a future for Spain that is completely different. Well, with a 17 year old. You definitely are uh, good to go. Uh, the second half, the game peeped it out, and it was then um, Ferran Torres who made in the 84th 4 0 resounding victory. Probably could have even been even five. Uh, Ukraine just was there to then, um, you know, take off the. Uh, you know, don't get totally steamrolled by Spain. Uh, at the same time as I was watching Spain against Ukraine, I had on the other side uh, Swiss, Switzerland and Germany on and I have to say my focus went more and more to the Switzerland and Germany and you know again big screen Spain, Ukraine, small screen and um, voice <laughs> sound for the other game so that I watch one and I listen to, to, to the other. Germany who still has not won a Nations League game even the sixth try started actually out a little bit better, a little bit more uh, with, with, with the initiative. And I have to say, uh, the Swiss defending at the beginning was very, very passive. You know, not uh, just standing there and letting Germany do uh, as they please, but they didn't please all that much. Uh, but the 1-0 after uh, a pass back from Ginter, Ginter and really rolled in nicely 
exactly in there with a lot of. Uh, it was a thoughtful goal, very much Tony Cross like um, in in a way. But the longer the game went on, I thought, yes, uh, G Germany got their chance now. This will be surely that they um, get their win. But Germany actually again fell back, and I I I, I don't know. Um, it was one of those, everyone loves Timo Werner, I don't see much coming from him, and also Leroy Sané did not look all that uh, alright as well, so it uh, was kind of weird from uh, from Germany, and Switzerland actually had chances, and if Seferovic would be in good form, he could have made at least one goal, I mean, there was one uh, <laughs> chance where he is clear, the, the ball is passed back and he just has to hit it right and it's probably has to bring it on, on goal, it just went out and then it was an offside but that was a huge chance for him um, a little bit later I think Sané uh, missed a, a sitter as well, they could have made it 2-0 for Germany, that would have killed the game probably but then Switzerland came and Seferovic even hit the um, upright it was not to be though but Switzerland saw that they can do so, so something against Germany. But again, coming off the break, it was Germany that was the first, the better team, but um, they are, get caught on the counter and Bolo plays a ball to Widmer, who makes it 1-1 in the 58th. And from that moment on, I almost felt that Germany was falling apart. And again, if Switzerland would have a, a striker, they probably could have uh, got, got the winner. I always had the feeling when Shaka had a free kick and another good chance in stoppage time, it really was more that Switzerland was going, going to win this than Germany. Kind of surprising. So yeah, uh, and not, another not non-win for uh, Germany, who are now only third in the table. Um, two points because Ukraine has actually won against Swiss, Swiss Switzerland, but Ukraine, as you see, the goal difference is really bad. In that group now, Spain really looking very, 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 very strong uh, moving forward. I watched also the early game between Wales and Bulgaria, although it was really Tampa and Dora against the Ferry Islands. Talk about that a little bit later. Um, it was not a great game. It was a torrentious rain. The best thing were definitely Bulgaria's New Georgia, which I really like, except maybe the color. There could be a little bit more, Bulg uh, you know, add a white one in that you have the Bulgarian flag. Uh, Bulgaria staunchly defending, Wales not having many chances. And. I really thought that Bulgaria can hold out for a nil nil draw and maybe uh, launch a counter attack some, somewhere. Yes, my, I say it again, my wife is from Bulgaria, so um, it's a family business there. I am from Bulgaria in this case. Um, as I said, I was not impressed by either Wales or Bulgaria all that much, and it was headed for the deserved result, a nil nil. And then the referee, for some reason, pulls out five minutes stoppage time. And again, in the 94th minute, uh, Williams, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Williams to Nate, Nate, Nate Williams, um, and he heads it in, and Bulgaria again in the 94th minute concedes a header. If both games would have ended a minute earlier, Bulgaria would now sit at four points, now they are on, on at one. It, it must hurt. Uh, it hurt me, and I, you know, um, <laughs> my wife was kind of... Have they conceded? Oh yes, and then I told, and then she, oh this is bad, this is bad, and I said, yeah. The only thing that I can say is that Bulgaria favors to finish last in this group, uh, which the, um, she didn't like initially the, the way I phrased it. Listen, how you talk about Bulgaria? And I said, yeah, this is how you say it. Also, I'm favorite to finish last. Anyway, so Bulgaria with another heartbreaking uh, goal conceded late. They need to work on that, but I have to see it. They look a lot more cohesive now and maybe for the playoffs against Hungary. Although Hungary, talk about them in a, in, in a bit. It doesn't look all that bad either. Uh, in the other game, Finland was the better team against uh, Ireland from what I, you know, as on. Okay, I wanted to watch this one, uh, but decided then on another game. Um, and I also have to say that I only saw highlights, but what I saw from highlights is that Finland had the better chances. Not much in the first half, uh, half chance by Pukki. Second half, uh, it was really uh, mostly going kind of so and so. And then Finland make, finds the breakthrough after a pass from Taylor Jensen makes it 1-0 uh, for uh, Finland in the 64th. And that kind of jump started the game because all the highlights I saw afterwards, it was like... Um, Poor defending by Finland and Ireland, could have used, but also Finland could have made one or two more goals. In the end, Finland hangs on to a win, which I 
thought and from what I heard, it was a, it was a deserved win. And again, those jerseys for Finland are just awesome. I, I, I just want, they need to go back to a brighter green and so a little bit more orange in there. Um, I watched most of the first half and not so much of the second half between Russia and Hungary. Well, Hang Hungary at home in white, I don't get it, in the Ferenc Buschka Stadium, which is finally completed. Um, Hungary, you know, off the good win and the good conference against, against Turkey, tra -la 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 running into the uh, Russian counter -ex. Hungary had the possession, Russia scored the goals, and it was easy for them. Uh, Miranchuk in the 15th, Ozdoyev in the 34th, 4th, it, uh, everything seemed like unchallenged. Um, seemingly, the uh, Hungarian coach, Rossi, Italian, uh, of, of course, uh, gave them a good talking, but uh, they still were not very well because right off the uh, bat, Juba gets the ball in, in the box and wants to shoot, but sees, ah, maybe, maybe I paid off. He paid off to uh, Fernandez, who puts it in 3 0 in the 46. At that moment, I said to my wife, okay, let's have uh, din have dinner now. And I was surprised when I got back to the TV to see that it was already 3 1. Salai with a nice goal assist by Kalma and he lobs it over the keeper. And then a few minutes later, uh, Nikolic even made it 3 2. But then I was watching again, but I didn't any see anything coming. The only thing I saw is that the Russia jerseys look weird and they could use with the little blue that they didn't like. Anyway, um, let's uh, Serbia, Turkey. The less said, the better. Kolarov got a red card. Turkey maybe the slightly better team, but there were not many chances. And the chances, you know, me, Mitrovic maybe should have made it a 1-0 before the half. Other than that, it's dreary, dreary, dreary. Um, dreary is probably also Slovenia. Uh, Bohar gets the goal uh, against Moldova. They had a second one ruled out, but... Um, Slovenia is not a great team to watch at the moment, although the jerseys are really uh, interesting and nice. Um, a little bit more I can say about Greece at Kosovo, where Limnios uh, get them an early goal. Jerseys also not, not look bad, and especially the second one by Siovas was a really nice skill, how he takes the ball, turns and puts it into the net, uh, putting Greece firmly in, into the driver's seat. I said Greece is the favorite in this group. Berisha puts one uh, back late, but Greece hangs on to the First Nations League victory. Which leads us now with Andorra against the Faroe Islands, a game that, uh, yeah, probably should, should, should have watched. Uh, I love League D. I do, and when I see two small nations, it's just great. Um, so we have uh, Andorra uh, was at home. Uh, I don't say I, I don't say they're the favorites because what I could see is the Fairy Islands controlled the game. They got a really nice uh, goal uh, with a back heel by Olsen in the third, 31st to seal the deal. Probably could have made a second one on, but Fairy Islands continued the dominance in this group. And then Malta against Latvia. Malta starting very brightly, very offensive, very attacking, and getting the goal, but right after Laat, we are a lucky equalizer, I think it was even on goal, and then the game kind of stalled and it remained 1-1. So yeah, let's look at the tables for groups B, uh, leagues B, C and D. Uh, in League B we have now Russia firmly in control of their group. Um, you always think that Russia is not, not all that great, but I think there is something growing there and they are getting consistent results. Reminds me a little bit about, you know, Ukraine, Poland, Poland, it's on Russia is on the coming and I think Hungary, despite losing, might be the second best team in, in this group, which is a little bit surprising. In the other group also, Wales looking really good and also considering that they have the head-to-head -head against Finland, so I think this um, means that Wales definitely, definitely um, are in the driver's seat to be promoted to League A there as well. In League C, uh, Greece and Slovenia are now uh, top of the group, but I definitely think that Greece is the team there that uh, will get, get, get promoted because the other ones, this is not too much comp competition for Greece. And Fairy Islands also looking very strong. If this was only a one-legged uh, group, the Fairy Islands would have already qualified because everyone else is just playing draws against each other. Um, you know, they are four more games to play, but uh, they are in a very, very strong position. Today, I think I don't need to recommend much to you. Netherlands against Italy.
that's the one. I will probably put the second screen, uh, Austria against Romania. I think everything else is kind of so-and-so. Um, but you know, if you have any leanings, watch. But I think Netherlands, Italy, I don't expect a great game, but it's tasty. Anyway, let me know what you watched uh, and what you thought about the games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.